the first thing that you will notice when you open up any kind of a, a media composer, uh, either from 5.5 or 6, it opens up on this window and the window is telling you there are the projects available. I have this little round pointer so you can follow my mouse. I'll try to move it slowly so you can follow it either on the side or in front of you. And I have some projects. Projects can be private, shared, or external. Shared would mean that you are sharing with, with other people, other users. Uh, external would be an external drive so you can pick it up, you can go away with it, and you can use it at the facility you work at. So all the project information and the media is on external. In this scenario, we are sharing a project and we can activate it by double clicking or hitting OK. Next step would be, what kind of projects can you create with Media Composer? Let's find out. When you click on the new project, there is a box, dialog box, that tells you that these are the projects you can work with. If you can see them, if you can, if you want to read them out, there is a 30 frame. I stands for interlaced, NTSC. If you're in the PAL territory, which usually means that your electrical current runs at 50 cycles. You have the 25i interlaced and PAL. Then you have the 720 options. Oh, mouse. 720 options. And then you have the 1080 options. So these are the projects. Now, here's something that Avid 6.0 introduced, and this is really, really cool. Probably in about a month, I'll have another presentation explaining the stereophonic. When you activate 1080i, 5994, you are able to actually record stereophonic. What is that about? Well, it's 3D. And 3D can be differently set up. Leading eye, left eye, all this stuff is a brand new, brand new uncharted territory for some of people who were cutting straight flat picture. So the 3D is a option in 6.0. You don't have it in earlier versions. The 3D requires, and this is where things start to get into the checkbook, it requires that you have the monitor that plays back the 3D stuff. Two, it would be good to shoot with a 3D camera, like inexpensive JVCs or any cameras. I'm sure these guys have them on the floor demoing them. I've seen uh, at the recent seminar when we were up in Connecticut uh, a $2,000 product 3D camera JVC. So for less than $2,000, you can have a 3D camera. Um, next thing is you can actually select the raster size, which is not a big deal. Raster is how the pixels are organized. 19, 20, 1080 is your best case scenario. Anything less than that is some kind of a change alteration like the P2 cards and so on. But I wanted to point out to you that if you are looking for 3D, you need to make sure that you're in 1080i. 3D is not available for standard or any of the PAL or 720, as far as I know. So that's where the 3D would come in. Let me cancel this, and let me use an existing product, project, and the project I will call MC101. Before I do that, before you do that, you might want to have your user settings. How many people are cooking in this room? Be honest. Cooking, OK. You have a certain way how the kitchen is organized. You have the utensils in a certain place. You have the uh, condiments and everything. And if somebody comes into your kitchen and they organize it differently, you may be upset. Well, the user setting is exactly what that is. You set up your environment, and you save it, and that's how things are organized. That's how the windows are organized. That's how the keyboard shortcuts and everything else. And if you go someplace else, you can take it with you and plug it in and say, hey, this is how I like my stuff. I worked at CBS. I'm going to ABC. I'm going to NASA. There's no more NASA, actually. I'm going to Lockheed. So I can travel and have my user settings with me. That is where the user profile would be. So if you start a brand new user profile, you activate it, and you say, I will call you guys the happy bunch. And even if you're not happy, I'll pretend that you are happy. So I am setting up a user setting the happy bunch. So, so far, I wasted a couple of minutes just explaining. I hope I wasn't wasting. But I spent this time to explain you that when you start your project, you have a lot of things to think about before you move on. So in this scenario, we have an existing project. Hit OK, opens up. 
And the three basic environments that everybody is familiar with, from, from, Final Cut Pro. I don't know how Final Cut Pro calls these two windows. We call them Composer. This is where the source material goes. This is where the record material goes. Help me out in Final Cut Pro. What are the names for them? Viewer and Canvas. Viewer and Canvas. There we go. We just learned something new. So the equivalent of source is viewer, and the equivalent of record is Canvas. And this window is called the Composer window, Composer environment. This is called Timeline anywhere and everywhere, as far as I know. Unless you have some information I'm not aware of, this is the timeline. This is where the graphic representation of the footage is going to be. Now, in Avid, we have a box, which is a folder, a bin, which we call Project Folder. This is where all the information about bins, folders, and everything else, like settings, like what is the format of the project, the effects, and so on. OK, let me show you something very quickly if you're a Final Cut Pro user. I'm not sure about Premiere because I haven't worked on that for a while. I am an old guy. My eyes are really burned out looking at monitors for years and years. So I would like to increase or decrease the font size. This environment I'm shaking, which is containing the red, the yellow, and the green buttons, is now the active environment. If you're working on Windows, it will have a blue banner across. This being the active environment, Edit Dropdown allows me to do my favorite adjustment. Set the font, bigger or smaller. You can have it your way. Which company gives you that option? I think it's a burger company, right? Burger King. Burger King. It's not small, medium, large. You can have it your way. You can have it 50. Obviously, it's too big or you can have it anything else you want. You can also set the color of that box to, oh, relax, relax, hold on. That's, I need to get these shortcuts out from the Mac, turn them off. So this is the actu active environment, the project. Edit drop down, set the color, let's set it to the color, and it did not kick it in for some reason. Okay, we'll deal with that as I go along. I will also use a couple of terms throughout the evening, I will say, if I did my job right and the computer works right. I'm sure you will understand what I mean by that. So if I did my job right and the computer works right, it should work. In this case, something was glitching. I'm not sure about it. I'll fix it. Bottom line, the size is changed by edit drop down of the font. Next thing, let's look at what the keyboard settings are or what the keyboard setup is. So that would be in the settings. Settings is basically looking under the hood. Bins view, settings view. It's looking under the hood, finding out what is working. How is it working? How is it set up? Let me start with the bin first. You'll see a little check off sign next to the bin, and that means that is the active bin environment. By double clicking, it opens up and it shows you that I have auto save interval set every 15 minutes. It means that every 15 minutes it will save a backup into an environment called Attic. You can always go back and retrieve it from there. But the most important thing I have here is I'm going to enable to edit from a bin, which means that I can drag from a bin, hit a splice in or overwrite from a bin, and it will go into your timeline. If these terms are not making sense as I go along, I will demonstrate them. Closing the box, the next setting I really need to know about is the keyboard. I have no idea. I have one of these white Macintosh keyboards. I don't know what's each key doing, so let's find out. By the way, KB keyboards and other manufacturers play manufacturer. What did I just lose there? Okay, one of these monitors got sick on that one. So look in the front and look at the back one. <laughs> so what happens is you can buy a keyboard that has the buttons on them already color coded. How does it look like? Let's type in K in here, K keyboard, and open it up. These are the buttons that you will see. Play button, 10 frames to the left, and so on. I'm giving you a business opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a Final Cut Pro user, you will create a keyboard setting that mimics, replicates the Final Cut Pro keyboard. And you can charge 99 cents and make tons of money. You heard it from me here first. <laughs> So you're going to duplicate the original keyboard setting with Apple D. And you can call that setting 
FCP for my friend. So you can actually physically set up all the shortcuts that you were used to in your Final Cut Pro and use the Avid keyboard and it will give you the same response, the same functions. I'm talking about mark in, mark out, play, pause, move one frame to the left, move one frame to the right, go into trim mode, go into slip mode, things of that sort. That's what I'm referring to. Any of these terms make sense so far for Final Cut Pro people? Okay, I'm moving along. And the most important thing that 6.0 was blasting about was the interface. Interface is I on the keyboard, interface. And they said, oh, we have this cool interface. And it's a very dark interface. And here is how it looks like. And everybody's going to love this interface. Wow, cool interface. It has been around, guys, since 5. Not to kill the excitement, this interface for your eyes is probably maybe more preferable. If that's what you prefer, sure, that's your interface. For demonstration purposes, I kind of think that it's easier for me to show things if it's brighter, lighter, applying it, and we are back to where we were. How many interfaces can you have? Uh, let's check it out. I have all the settings. I could duplicate interface. Apple D duplicates interface. I can have a light. I can have a dark. Any combination of these interfaces are available. The magical thing is that it is not pegged, not locked, not only exclusive to you. In this case, we are the happy bunch. We could save just a portion. That's where your 99 cents selling comes in. You can actually have a special site setting. Think about the site setting as a communal basket. So depending on how many editors are working on the system, you can share the interface with everybody. And they can grab it from there, put it into their settings. If you've never seen this before, Avid people, this is a cool thing to know about. Let's close this window. Now, let's move along. Let's move the stuff around and try to get into trouble. Trouble means that I have my stuff all disarrayed, disorganized, all like really sloppy, really like messed up. In the past versions, this is for Media Composer people, there was a tool set. We don't have that anymore. We call it Windows from now on. And the Windows have been layout or workspaces. In this case, the workspace I want to go back to is source record editing. By clicking on it, it should go back to my default or saved source record editing. What other choices are available? When we go into color correction, we'll see this kind of a workspace. And we're going to have effects editing and so on and so on and so on. How much time you have how much money is thrown at the product, you can go very detailed and make it like really pretty for you. Source record is what my starting point is. So let's move along. Let me show you how footage is displayed. Footage we call clips. And the reason why Avid calls it clips, Avid started out over 20 years ago as a helper for film. And film people, when they develop film, what do they call that film? Clip. Remind me, where do you put that clip? Where do you hang that clip? Onto a rod that is above a bin. So that's why Avid calls its storage, primary storage area bin. Because the first editors who were learning Avid on the West Coast or on the East Coast, they had to be probably film guys who said, hey, you have this new computer, you have to learn it. Oh, I don't know, I'm a film guy, I don't know how to do that. So let me show you, it is not a folder. OK, it's not a folder, it's a bin. Good. Avid's smallest entity that can be moved around, copied, is a bin, B-I-N. And also, you can actually visually see it. There's like a little tiny little two strips hanging from it. So moving along, the name of the bin can be always changed. New bin, this is how you make a bin. And it can have a whole bunch of bins made. And each of those bins will contain or have the name of the project. Whenever you see in 6.0 a bin that has 6K, that is an empty bin. So let me give you a quick scenario. If you're working on a reality show, wouldn't you like to work on one of those? Tons of money? I don't know. I am not your agent. But here is how you would shoot your Monday stuff. 
I'm renaming MOM, let's do Tuesday. I'm just renaming these bins. And for each day of the week, they are bringing you footage to work with. So far, you got my ID, I believe, on this one, right? So the next step would be organize this into a environment that I can call reality show. I somehow don't see a shortcut for a new folder, nor I see a new folder, only has new bin. When you're hungry for knowledge, you go to library. Well, Avid gives you the hamburger if you're hungry for knowledge. So you find this little icon looks like a hamburger, and it's a fast menu, and now you can see a new folder. There we go. So the folder is going to be reality show. And you can put all your, in this case I have, Friday, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, drag them into your reality show folder. So from now on, they should be inside a folder. So I have five bins. Simple as that. This little fast menu I will call constantly hamburger. It reminds me of hamburger. And if you are a novice, you're always hungry for knowledge. That's where you can always go and a lot of stuff is in there. You knew that before, Avid people, yes? You use that at all? If you don't use it, welcome to the world of hunger for knowledge. All right, how does one delete things? This is going back to the basics. You work in an environment, you just got hired because you took this hour and a half presentation, you fall in love with Avid, you take a five-day master class, by February, you're working in an environment that is avid environment, making pick a dollar amount a week. So somebody says, oh, excuse me, I deleted your bin accidentally. Let me show you what accidentally means. Hitting a delete puts that bin into trash. In the trash, we see it and we can physically drag it out like, what was that, George Constanza took out a donut from the trash? What was that? Something like that, took it out, so we took it out. Take us out. Again, let's delete that. In order for you to delete a bin, these are the steps. Step one, go to the hamburger and empty trash. Can anybody read out the default? Don't empty. So there's no reason, no way that they can accidentally delete that. You tell them it is not true. You have to physically empty trash, change it, and then it's deleted. So there's no, oh, I accidentally lost a bin. It's either a glitch on the computer or something. They cannot accidentally delete things. I will now intentionally delete four of these guys hitting delete. They go into a trash hamburger. I'll call it from now a hamburger. It just sounds good to me. An empty trash. How do you delete a folder? I usually recommend highlight it and go into the Hamburger, delete, that selected, and it deletes it now. Now we are brand new, clean, and moving along. So, so far this is boring. It's not really exciting. Yes, please. Can you delete from the button, or do you have to go into the menu? You have to go into the hamburger, Stephen. There is no way that I know of that you can delete when it's in the trash. And there's no way that I can delete it if it's a folder. I don't know of one new folder. If I'm here, if I hit this guy, let's try it. If you hit the delete button, it puts it into trash, but the trash needs to be deleted from here. So let me rephrase that. If you want to delete a folder, yes, like you've been doing along, if I misunderstood you. But to delete it from the trash, there is no way that you can delete the trash from hitting delete trash. It says uh, track cannot be moved. That's you need to delete from here. Physically, you have to go there. So the answer, Stephen, is folder can be deleted using delete, yes. But from the trash, you have to go into the hamburger. Isn't it best to just uh, get rid of the trash at the end? Is that why they made it like that? So you just I don't pick know. Twice? Pick one. Pick what works for you. Whatever works for you. I need to move along to get you guys prepped for the exciting second portion of the show. So now the next thing is, I said, find out the untitled folder. <sighs> Delete that. Empty trash, I said. There we go. Wake up. There we go. So let's look at stuff. Looking at stuff can be very, very specific. How so? I have some footage in first track production 
folder, I have two bins, FT selects is first track, double clicking opens it up, and this is the first time you're gonna see three different views. In the past, Avid had four different views, had a brief, had a text, had a frame, and uh, the third one is, I believe, called script, yes indeed. And it used to be on the top area of the bin. This is the bin, that's the open bin. It's different from the project. You can notice that the project contains bins, settings, and all the rest of the cool stuff. The bin actually is just containing a minimize it, make it bigger, or in the bottom, it has a choice, looking at it in text view. Oh, my eyes again, remember what I did earlier? Let's go into the font. Oh, bin background, let's see if this works now. Oh, it works now, beautiful, yellow background. Cool, wake everybody up, set the font, make it 30. So my friend Steven can see it. Good deal, I don't know if it is good. What I like about it is that I can actually add columns. In the past they called them headings. What's a column? Well, I would like to know when was this created, this shot. Okay, remember where I go when I'm hungry? To the hamburger. Okay, the hamburger shows me columns and the columns are Creation date, I believe I activated. Let's see what the duration is and what drive it lives on. Hit OK. Cool stuff. Well, I don't know if it's cool, it's not really impressive, but bottom line is I do have the ability to see the duration of a shot. For my purposes, the duration should be the first thing. Move it left. Ah, cool. I don't care about the drive. Hit delete. I'm not deleting it, I'm hiding it. Creation day, ah, okay, it's important, but I want to have it maybe here, maybe before the offline. I have something offline. Somebody tell me that you want to see the duration ascending to descending. Can we see duration to ascending? Thank you very much. Double clicking on it organizes it ascending and double clicking on it descending. One, Avid is the company of the multiple choices. If you hold down Right click or hold down control, the choice says sort the column ascending or sort the column descending. But wait, there is more. If you're a keyboard person, what is this environment? Remind me, bin, B-I-N. In the bin, there should be a choice to sort the footage in ascending or holding down, oh, wait a minute, what am I holding down? Apple E, if you hold down Apple Option E, it should be descending, let's try it. Apple option E, man, works, this is great. It works also for alphabetics, obviously, Apple E. Let me make sure that I'm doing the right thing, Apple option E. So far we have some shortcuts to go home to. If it's exciting and you are excited about how this is looking, you can say save, hello, save this view as my view, my favorite view. This is how you save visually the text view so next time you open up a bin where there's a whole bunch of shots you can have the name and the duration right next to it. Can yes please. Can you give a column um, into it to your path? You can actually have a column that is going to be telling you are you something other than what the choices are. What do I mean by that? I mean by that if you're missing NTS your pal, you can physically add a column that is a custom column. Where would you do that? You go past the last existing column. In this slide, offline is my last existing column. Do you see an empty space there where my cursor is hovering there? I'll call it pal, P-A-L. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, I have a column and it actually is now PAL column. Oh, uh, to mix PAL and NTSC. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know natively that you can. It's an NTSC project or a PAL project. Remember in the beginning when we said we're gonna go and start a project? We start a new project and the new project is either NTSC or PAL. So, let's go back and start to do some playing so when we start shooting you understand exactly how the system works. In this scenario I already showed you different views and the views are chosen by 
selecting text, frame. The frame view is a popular view because the frame view allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff. How so? You can actually grab a whole bunch of shots and say, hey, I'm going to put the story together like Final Cut Pro people do. Let me repeat that. I'll put a story together like Final Cut Pro people do. Final Cut Pro people are drag and drop people, if I can use that. Not sure if that's how you were doing it. But let's say that these are the six shots you want to put together a story from. Highlighting all the six shots, you can tell them all to go to the first frame or to the last frame. What am I hitting? What keyboard am I hitting? Well, on the keyboard, there is a set of keys. One of them parks to the first frame, go to start. One of them parks to the last frame. So theoretically and in practice, you could select, in this case, six shots and tell them all to go to the first frame or go to the last frame. While you are here, if you are working in a professional facility, it's highly likely that you will have an NTSC monitor or in PAL, a PAL monitor. So by hitting the space bar, you actually are playing out the footage inside the bin and looking at it in frame view. Oh, by the way, can you increase the frame size? This environment is the bin. See if we can increase it. In the bin, I can actually edit, reduce the frame or layers of, aha, uh -huh. shortcut is Apple L makes it bigger, Apple K makes it smaller. Let's try it. Can I go higher than this? Apple L, no, Apple K, I can go smaller. This is the biggest I can do, depending on what your screen resolution is. So you can actually increase and decrease the size of this. It is not going to be bigger because that's what I have in pixels. So you can actually play the shot and should I say check it out, audition it before you even go with it. This is also the time and place where you can select what is the representative frame of the shot. What do I mean by that? When the guy is on the top of the hill and starts to spray the snow, I'll stop it and, I'm sorry, he's not spraying the snow, he's jumping. That's the representative frame of that shot without putting in any source or anything like that. So in theory, you can actually put together a story saying these six shots will go to the first frame. I will organize them ascending top to bottom or left to right, or this is the postcard, one shot, two shot, three shots, four shots, five shots, six shots. Did I say earlier Final Cut Pro people? Did I say drag and drop? Drag and drop, it's not a concept that Avid doesn't know about. Drag and drop in a timeline. Cool, the story is put together. Well, I don't know what the story is, but I drag the six shots in here. So if these six shots are what you are using in your story, <coughs> guess what? You have a story. Another choice. This is, again, for quick editing thing. You can walk home with this, and you can start cutting your stories. I'm deleting the sequence that I created. Relax. There we go. And I will show you an easier way to select portions of the shots before you put them in. What do you mean portions of the shots? Well, these are the entire shots, the entire shot. Each shot, the entire footage, the entire duration is brought in. How about if I bring in, let's say, three seconds of each of them, presuming I have three seconds or more. So here's how one would go about it. Lasso, tell all the guys to go home which means go to the first frame, not last frame, first frame. On the fly, on the fly, keyboard shortcuts for marking in on Final Cut Pro, help me out what the letter is? Uh, I and what is the mark out? O. o, therefore on the keyboard, I and O does work. I and O, cool. So we are still talking the same language. Watch this. I will hit the space bar and on the fly hit I, one, two, three, O, out. On the fly, hit the space bar, I, one, two, three, O oh, out. You need to watch my hands so you can tell the group that I am not making any magical stuff here behind the keyboard, okay? Hit the space bar, hit I, one, two, three, O oh, out. If I did my job, it will work. Hit the space bar, hit I, one, two, three, out. Next one, space bar, I, one, two, three, out. And the last one, Hit space bar, let's wait until jumps. I, one, two, three, let him fall, let him fall, let him fall, let him fall, bam, out, that's it. So I should have in and outs already selected. Please say you don't trust me. Thank you. Drag it in the source monitor and check it. It's already in there. 
Double clicking on it also puts in a source monitor, so it shows it is there. So all six of them should be. So the trust level, I hope, is now increasing slowly. Let's organize them in a one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, presumption, ladies and gentlemen, I did my job right and the computer works right, is lasso these six shots and drag them in the timeline. I should have now sequence put together with approximately three seconds, and the rest of the guys are going to be, I think the last guy is more than three seconds. Biggest problem for everybody in the last row, you don't see, first of all, what is the duration of the shot. What? Did I remember telling you earlier? Hamburger. The clip text will play not just the name, but it will show you the duration. OK. Yeah, but Tibor, this is too small. We can't see it from the back. Can you increase the size? You remember how I did that earlier? Edit drop down, set the font, and for yours, there we go, 20. Can you guys see it from the back? Do I make it bigger? Tibor, can you change the color of the track? What? You want me to change the color? I'll change the color. This uh, deselecting the track will turn it off. I need to just have the video track selected and change the color of that. Oh, by the way, let me clear the source monitor. Click on the box, and there's a clear monitor choice. So I have no conflicting things going on. So the color of the track, this is for my friends who have been using Avid before. If you are not happy with the track color, which is usually like silly colors, holding down Option opens up the additional parameters, and I'm going to make it. I don't know, guys, if you like the Caribbean, but at this time of the year, here is the watercolor I'm looking for. Now you see it. Please tell me you want to have the track height bigger. Apple L, remember, did what? In the frame view, made it bigger. Therefore, the same principle applies. Apple L makes it bigger. Oh, cool. Nice. Now, so you are pretty much aware of that I'm not really good with getting a three-second length, so I missed them. But you see the lengths of the shots. So I put together a sequence very quickly. The sequence, or any sequence you make in Avid, is always called untitled sequence. First step, when you have one or have two, right away change them and change the name to something. Because if you have two untitles, your life is going to be really, really a mess because you will not be able to find things. So, so far, we understand a couple of things that Final Cut Pro people were comfortable with. Guys, this is the same thing. Hitting the space bar plays it out. I don't have any music except on one of them. I have some sound coming down. But playing out the sequence is very cool. Well, what do you mean very cool? A lot of demonstrators use these terms. Cool, hip, exciting. Well, what's exciting for me in Avid is that they have a shortcut key for me or for you to play things in full screen playback. OK, this is heaven as far as I'm concerned. I can always check it because there are some products, Final Cut Pro, I was not able to find a button to do it right away. I'm sure that there is a way to go around it, but this is really cool. For clients, for people who are paying the bill, this is like really nice so they can see it bigger. Now, keep in mind something. This is a little side note for anybody who is a Macintosh user and Media Composer user. On the bottom of the timeline, this box, the video quality menu, likes to be full green. Full green means that whatever the quality you had is going to be played back in full quality. If you change it to a lesser quality, which in this case is the lowest quality or the half quality, you are actually helping effects play in real time if you have a whole bunch of layers. In this scenario, there's no need for me to do that, so I can actually activate just the green, the full quality. Here's what my scenario is. I will bring a sequence. I will put a set of shots into it. I will make some color corrections. I will reformat it, and I will export it. That's what my process is going to be. I do have a bin that I had set up earlier. And in that bin, I have a project that looks like, let's see. You will hear this song 
usually around the holidays or this tune around the holidays. The Nutcracker. You will see that there is some video on it. You will also see that there is three tracks of audio. I will color the third track a little bit different. One and two will be gray. The third track will be colored using the hamburger. Let's say track color, select it, and make it my favorite color in the winter, the beautiful Caribbean Sea. Let's make it green, the two audio tracks that are music, so we can distinguish them. Uh, I am waiting for people to ask me, how can I see sample plots, waveforms? Thank you very much. Two different options. One option using the hamburger, and the hamburger will tell you that the audio data will be a waveform. That's one option. The other option is much more practical, and that has been around for a while. It presumes that you will choose those per track selection. Therefore, the original is set up for none. And you open up an additional box, which is a track control panel, and turn it on or off on or off, and you can actually see these guys. The height of the track, remember how we dealt with that? We dealt with that Apple L. I don't have now the luxury to wait for it, so I'm going to do manually part between the two tracks. In the crack holding down option, I'm increasing individually each track height. This is for my friend Steven, who is cutting beautiful documentaries, award-winning stuff. So when you want to see things bigger, Steven, this is what you are doing, right? Here is one question that will also hopefully be asked. To thicken, to fatten, to make maybe thinner the sample plot, Avid allows you to do it the following way. Holding down Apple option and K makes it thinner. It does not change the volume, does not change the characteristics. It just changes it visually. Reason why, when you import something from a CD, it looks like this usually. It's usually really fat, so you can't really find any beats. So Apple option gives you the option, or Apple option gives you the choice, so you can look at it much easier. Now, in this scenario, you will hear that the sound of the narration, which is on blue track, is volume-wise probably a little bit lower. Two choices, either raise the blue tracks or lower the green tracks. Here are the choices. I will use volume. In 5.0 and 5.5, they called it automation gain, if you've ever seen that. Now they call it volume. So the volume is going to be brought down as well as volume brought down. In order for you to bring it down, you add a keyframe, which looks like this. Rubber banding, anybody remembers Pro Tools rubber banding? Drag it down, and you have it. I turned on the view that gives me the volume. And also, I activated a keyframe. So the keyframe allows me to increase or decrease the volume in that entire duration and make adjustments as I go along. Add a keyframe, add a keyframe, bring down the volume, bring down the volume preference. That's my automation. Yes, it used to be called automation. Thank you. This automation is allowing you to record it actually live in the audio mixer. In the audio mixer, you have the tool to record this. And here is how you would do that. When you're an automation gain, the red button allows you to record this. I will do this live right now just to demonstrate the principle. So anything that I have done, I'm going to undo. Oh, undo. You can undo things? Yes. How far back can you go? I can go back more than 32. In newer versions, it's up to 99. I haven't, when, I haven't gone beyond that, but you can actually go back. Look at that. Cool, and you can actually park at that undo and see which undo are you at. So you can actually show you where you are undoing your things. So it's, I think, a good choice. Now, in this scenario, did I promise to show you how to record live automation? Let me do that. Out, audio mixer is on. And in this scenario, I can also show you that, yes, did I say 5 to 1 stereo? Yeah, I don't have that now. I don't have 5 to 1 because that's not the kind of project. But I could mix it 5 to 1, 7 to 1, surround sound. For this really to work, ladies and gentlemen, I should have one speaker, center, one on the left, another one on the right, one on the left back, one on the back. That's the 5. For surround, I would need to have two more. 
for you to experience it. I don't have that luxury at this point. But as I said, a month, maybe two months from now, we'll probably have those demonstrations where technology is going to be really catching up with all these peripherals. So anyways, so next choice. I am not using it clip. Clip means that anything I adjust will be the entire clip. This is a clip. The whole duration is a clip. I'm not doing the clip. I'm going to do automation. I will make sure that one and two is ganged together. What do you mean ganged together? Well, whatever I do to one slider, both sliders will go with it. That's it. Also, we would call them in audio people, how do you call it? Gang? Gang them. That's the proper word for it, right? So audio people call the same thing, OK? So in this scenario, I will make sure that when I hit record, I am at the beginning, and I'm going to ride it for you. Do I still need a second monitor? Not really. This is the time where I will rearrange my work environment and say, excuse me, I only need just one monitor. One is enough. Oh, neat. Real estate, guys, is not expensive only in Manhattan. It's expensive anywhere. So in this scenario, I will shrink this stuff, hide it behind it, and let's do it already. People are excited. The trains are leaving. The buses are taking off. So here it comes. The record button should give me the option. Start with Bring it down. Let's go crazy a bit. That's silly, but you understand what I'm doing. Let's stop the recording and see what happened. Oh, cool. Uh, excuse me, could you turn the sample plot, or we call it now volume, because I don't see what you're doing there. So let's turn off and only see the volume control. Let's look at the sliders as well as the timeline. Don't miss the show. Goes down. Calling I keep it down. Then I go nuts. Yes, please. On the fly. Thank you very much. That's the key word. So your mix is pretty much done, and you just need to do the sound. Let me do the sound for you on the fly. When you record over it, guess what? The original gets lost. So let me do it properly now. That makes sense. Don't miss the show. Bring it down Thanks while he's calling. talking. Marvelous. Outstanding. I'm holding it down. Stunning. Join the international cast as they reinterpret the timeless Christmas classic. Blending ballet, jazz, tap, flamenco, and more. Tony Williams, Urban Netcracker, playing for December 21st. And I'll bring Friday the volume up just when he finishes. Call to reserve your tickets today. Bring up the audience, lap, pa, 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 and fade out now. There we go. So if I did my job right, you pretty much see exactly what automation must be. Yeah, OK, so we got it. Apple S. Command us just in case everything is safe. So if I did my job right, it should work. Don't miss the show that critics are if calling. If you like it, you sign off on it, get the check, and get out of here. No, you have to do some adjustment. If you are not a live person, and if you're not as good with the mouse like I am, which I'm not, you get yourself a sliding environment mixers they have, USB, whatever the connections, you connect it into it. Or, or do the following. Let me take this off and do it manually. Manually means that I will add a fade up at the beginning, just about here, adding a keyframe. Here's the keyframe. Fade it up, hold it down for the whole duration, and at the end, maybe bring it up a bit. Bring it up, bring it up, hold it up, and at the end, kick it down. There we go. Don't miss the show that critics are calling. It goes up at the end, right? <laughs> Beautiful. Do you see track three is active? Let's solo him. S stands for solo. The critics are calling. Mark. Let's bring his volume up so you can hear him. And we're going to have him talk like through the telephone. What do you mean? Like the telephone. What frequency is that? Well, let's park on it. Do you see that I am parked on a specific clip, the blue clip? Let's take the sample plot off because that may be confusing. Let's add a effect we call it telephone EQ. Let's hear him real time. Don't miss the show that critics are calling. Nice. Outstanding and simply stunning. Through the phone. You have a whole bunch of these shortcuts. If you can read them, female voice with presence, male voice. You can do an NTSC hum buster. Anybody knows what the hum buster in NTSC would do? The air conditioning hum, which is running at what cycle? 60. 
if you are not happy with what you see here as a preset, I have a tool in the audio tool that allows you to do stuff like that. Audio tool looks like this. I'm sorry, audio suite. Audio suite looks like this. It says, uh, what do you want to do? Let's change his voice. We're going to put him in witness protection. What? Put him in witness protection. Okay? You watch the CBS shows and they say, oh, the guys, you know, I was, was, I was witnessing what the mob was doing. No. I'm going to show you how they do it. I train them so I know what they are doing. This is the first step. You select the track you're going to apply it to. In this case, it is the guy talking. That critics are calling Marvin. This is the audio suite window. I have a whole bunch of presets here. Whoa, cool. Let's go into the pitch shift. The pitch shift. I will lower his pitch for fun. This is a plugin, therefore going to the plugin. And the plugin is going to bring the ratio is one toward one. Let's drop it down. If I can preview it, I should be able to hear. Don't miss the show. That critics are calling. Because I'm using Water. time correction. Outstanding. Oh, shut up. Mm. Shut up. I'm sorry. Because I chose to use the time correction. The time correction allows me to keep the tempo and not drop the pitch and slow down. Or pick up the pitch and go up faster. So that will allow me to do that. And if I did my job right. Don't miss the show that critics are let's calling. Do, let's do marvelous. it with the outstanding and simply stunning. Don't miss the show. Let's do this. Let's raise it so we'll have chipmunk. And it is now 145. Let's render it quickly out of here. And if we play it back, this is what the result is. Don't miss the show. I'm sorry. I did not probably do the right thing. Raise it 545. Render it. There we go. Render it and. That critics are calling marvelous, outstanding, and simply stunning. OK. Here's my 7-band EQ. And I can actually pick up which frequencies I'm going to push. So you can work with that. Again, this is not an audio demonstration. I don't want to take away from the fun of the AMA. But yes, there's so many tools that we can work on. We can even maybe ask the guys to give us just an audio component for the Avid. So I'll show you how the Avid deals with that. But there's so many ways of doing this. You have to decide which is more efficient or most efficient for you. These little boxes that are under here, each of the tracks, they are called uh, real-time audio suite plugins. Actually, you can put five effects on top of each other, and it is track-specific. So you can put in on first one. Let's say we're going to put in a delay. And the second one is going to be on the second one is going to be, insert B is going to be a reverb. I'm putting in a reverb, which is, hello, my keyboard mouse, there we go. Reverb, which is blah, 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 stereo reverb, there we go. So you can have two effects on top of each other, clicking on the delay and clicking on the reverb. They can be on top of each other, like in Pro Tools, real time. Is that automatically in there? Is it is plus? there since 5.0. So if you have 5.0, you are in good shape. OK, so let me move along and just introduce to you to the friend that I have been promising since we started. My friend is going to be videotaping you guys. And this is my friend. Very inexpensive camera. Turn it on. I will set it up in video. And I will have two separate couple of second shots. And whoever is lit might be able to see. And we're going to probably have some light issues. I have one. Two, if you would like to wave so we know it's live people, wave to the camera, please. There we go. So you know it's used, guys. There we go. Cut. And we're going to have the second group here. And anybody who wants to wave, on three. There we go. And cut. Everything works well. If everything works well, this is now on my little SD card. Should be. If you have. A multi-card, you can use that. I'm using the El Cheapo. You can travel with anywhere in the world. A little SD card. Clearly, for a 7D, you would have to have a different one. Put it in and plug it into the USB connector. I do believe I have a bin called AMA. The AMA bin is the place where I'm going to bring this footage in. Or I'm not going to bring it in. I'm just going to make the connection. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm making only the connection. It's almost like a virtual thing. So this is how one does that. Right clicks and link to AMA files or file. 
singular or plural. In this scenario, I have a cannon. Here is my 100, and I have two shots, one or two. The primary purpose of this was to audition the footage before you bring it in. The primary purpose was to audition the footage before you bring it in. And they are here. In frame view, I can actually play them in the timeline. But to make life interesting for you, let me play them in the source monitor by dragging it in. That's use, guys. Two, if you would like to wave so we know it's live people, wave to the camera, please. There we go, so you know it's use, guys. Use, guys, what kind of language am I using? Brooklyn, Brooklyn thank you very much. There we go. And now, you will notice that you are stretched out. The camera shoots four by three, the project is 16 by nine. So there is one problem right away there that I need to fix. Two, lighting, that's where the color comes in. So I am moving along as my schedule was. So here it is. I will put in one shot, relax, one shot at a time, and incorporate it in the stream here with the audio, the mouse. So I need another track of audio. Another track of audio is Apple U. There's my other track of audio. Bring in the audio and put it in between the second and the third shot. Marking in, marking out determines how much I bring in. You see the areas highlighted. And I will select this group from where the, just before the hands come up. There we go. Mark in, three point edit. We have the destination mark in, we have destination mark out, and at the source we have the mark in. In this scenario, I will do an overwrite, and I have you guys in the stream. Joe, that critics are calling marvelous, outstanding. Okay, because it's soloed, I don't hear you, let's hear you. Joe, that critics there are calling go. marvelous, outstanding. Okay, so we have one shot. Let's put the second shot in, same scenario, mark in. Mark out somewhere here, and I said mark in, hello, I, there we go. And find the second one, which is believe number one, uh, nine. Here it is. Just before you raise your hand, somewhere there. Okay, so overwrite, so I have now two shots that are in the stream, and I never imported it. How does the computer know that I am in the stream? Well, the computer in text view, watch this, see if you can see that. Let me bring it up a bit bigger. It has those little links, little links, look like a little link on it, the shot, meaning that this shot is not in, it is AMA connected only. It is reading it off the what drive? The Canon DC drive. So next step was, I promised, I will make it fit the screen, fit the screen. So in this scenario, I need to make it squash in a 16 by nine. Avid has a very simple tool for that. The tool for that is called, is named, where's my project? If I lose my project, bring up the project. There we go. In the fact family, we have a reformat. A reformat option, and let's make it, uh, I believe if I put it on this, it's gonna make it. No, it squashed it four by three, makes it four by three. Anytime you see a green dot next to an effect, it signifies what, Avid people? Real-time effect. It's doing it real-time. Same thing here, four by three, put it on. That's it. Ah, this window thing. So I have both of you guys playing in the proper aspect ratio. Let's close the source monitor so it doesn't interfere with us. And because we want to show you in full screen, how did we do it before? <coughs> Windows, drop down. Workspaces, full screen playback. Don't miss the show that critics are calling marvelous, outstanding, and simply stunning. It's live people, wait for the camera. As they re wow, we got some live people on camera. So the next step would be, just making sure I save it, I said I'm going to correct the color. Well, I will adjust the color. In the Windows drop-down workspaces, do the color correction. To the segment, I will apply the color, and the color will look like this. It is too, too dark. Let me set up your Y waveform, which is the luminance. You see it's too dark. I have a couple of choices. In electronics, this is a trivia question for everybody in the room. 
What are the two basic problems electronic cameras face? The two basic problems. White balance is the first one. What was the second problem? You white balance, but the conditions changed. Yes, you can word it any way you want it, but bottom line is that when you white balance, things usually go well, but when you change the conditions, you white balance for outside, go inside, it changes. So Avid has two solutions for that. One is the curves, one is the HSL. Curves is the more powerful tool because curves does adjust the lighting and the chrominance at the same time. Adjust luminance and chrominance. So in that scenario, I will do the lazy approach, set my balance first, and then set my contrast. So if that didn't give me the result, I'll push maybe the light area the light gray area, maybe bring down, uh, maybe bring down the dark area a bit. Hello, relax, mouse. There we go. Or maybe adjust some colors. In this case, if I take away the blue, take away the blue, make it more, add more blue, make it more psychedelic. I am having a problem with this mouse today. <laughs> Stay with me on this one. I apologize. Purple. Wow, purple haze. Jimi Hendrix comes to mind. Here's an interesting point. I had the same conditions on the first one as on the second one. Instead of redoing it again, I can actually save this holding down option and put it into a container. So I can come to second. Or the easiest way is just to drag it from here and put it on. There we go. So the second shot should be the same thing. Except what happened is that on the second one, because I had not held down option, it kicked out the original effect, which was the reformat effect. So holding down option, I believe, should do that. If it doesn't go about it, let's see if I can do the same thing. Yes, putting on it now, it has both of them. So you guys are all pretty and smiley, and let's get out of here because I need to get things done on time. Workspace, back to source record. If I play it out, the next step is going to be... Don't miss the show that critics are calling marvelous, outstanding, and simply stunning. Live people, wait to the camera. As they Got you. So before things get really out of hand, let me select this entire section. The section I select contains three, four, five, six video shots, has some audio, some voiceover, and some NAT sound. Do you see the in and out points are selected here? Right clicking on it will make me choose what the choices are. In this case, I will export it. I will export it not as a AIFF. I will export it as a onto a desktop. I will export it as a QuickTime movie. QuickTime movie, if you take my course, I'll show you how to do this. This is where the sales pitch comes in. Customize the size because I don't want to have them telling me what size I'm going to work with. I'm going to activate, make sure that. Use the marks. Use the marks means that I am selecting a portion of the sequence, mark being in and out. I'm also enabling the tracks, selecting what tracks are being chosen in the timeline that will be sent out in. I will also make sure it's video and audio at the same time. I will also make sure the color space is going to be 601, 709. Format options. Here is where your compression gain comes in. How do you compress it? I will use the fastest right now, but these are all available compressions in 6.0. Apple ProRes, Final Cut Pro people, I want to see a smile on your faces. So it understands that. I also have H.264, very, very popular, and I will use now the MPEG-4 because that's just a faster way to do that. I said I will use the faster way, so let's go down there and MPEG-4. The quality is going to be determined by the slider. When I'm done, hit OK. The next thing is filter. You can add filters to it. Still, I would refer to that when you have time. Size-wise, I will actually not use the preset times. I will use my custom time. Custom time will be 360 and 180. I'm sorry, 320 and 180. That will be the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So OK it. If everything is OK here, the next thing is setting the sound. Watch this. This sound is now totally way, way professional. It used to be stopping at 48. Now you can go up to 96, 192. You can go 24-bit. I mean, you can go really, really how crazy you want to get. In this scenario, you can go even 32-bit sound. Whoa, we are talking huge, 
huge professional stuff. Okay, so on that note, let's okay it. And because we like this whole thing as a setup, we can save it as B and H export setting. Why? Because next time I come back, I don't have to go through this whole process. I will have that export setting. If I did my job right and hit save, it will ask me where to put it. I said desktop, I will call it today is Thursday. Desktop, BNH export, and, and it takes probably less than 30 seconds. Okay, I was right on the target there. When I export it, it becomes a QuickTime movie file. Let me check it for you. My time is almost up. Do remember, the media has never been imported. The media is still on the drive. Let me minimize Media Composer. And on the desktop, it should be here. Double clicking on it should open it up. Playing it should be. And the sound is. Very oh. Marvelous, outstanding, and simple. That's you guys. Live people, wait to the camera. As they re now, here is where magic begins. Watch me doing the unthinkable. Oh, oh, my heart is hurting me. No, we don't do that kind of acting. The media was never connected. Well, never imported, but it's connected, so it's offline. And it now lost, these little icons lost those little two nods. But did I have them on the, it's still there. Don't miss the show that critics there are you calling go. marvelous, outstanding. Huh. How big is this file? Apple I tells me it's, in today's world, 7.6 megabytes is nothing. You could obviously make it bigger by dragging down the window so you guys can see yourselves, watch yourselves for the last time. Let me go back again. I said, not that fast. Watch it nicely. Don't miss the show that critics are calling marvelous, outstanding, and simply stunning. Live people, wait to the camera. As they that was a well-lit place, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you like it, but I blew up actually a standard, which was this size, to a larger one, and you were able to see it. Now, here's where magic really comes home. Oh, Tibor, remember that shot? Yes, it was here. Would you like to reconnect it? Yes. Reconnection is simple as reconnecting it one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, bam, we are reconnected. And it tells me again that I am connected to AMA. There is nothing like it, ladies and gentlemen, on the market. Here's the only thing that you need to be warned about. If you, for some reason, delete this DCN5410 off that environment, it's gone. The only place it will live is in this sequence that I exported. It will not live on the Avid system as separate media. Some people do the following. They do create a folder on the desktop, and the folder they call AMA stuff, and they bring in from the Canon in its raw form, in its raw form, like so. So actually, they duplicate it. They copy it, holding down Option, bring it in. They are not making it MXF. It is now raw MOV still on that drive. And that way you can go back and shoot more stuff on that removable media. So if you like this, I appreciate your <coughs> continued support of BNH, continued support of any of the uh, training facilities. The training facility representative is my good friend here. He's going to oh, collect all your uh, emails. And if you like things that we do, please keep us in mind. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.